I've, I've seen the stuff with Iran, and I've seen folks even try to take a left, uh, well, what is functionally an ultra left position on Iran by trying to, you know, out left the left or whatever the fuck. Um, <laughs> I'm not, you know, <laughs> not taking a basic, not taking a basic, you know, principal position from an international perspective. <laughs> Iranian nuclear weapons development. They have turned the island into a communist hellhole. The experiment in Venezuela has failed completely. Like why why do you think so many people on the left like fucking like just believe all this shit about Iran and like your analysis, right? Like like what do you tell people when when people are like, Oh, I thought communists are supposed to like protest against Iran and stuff like that? I was about to say the US has a left. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what left are you talking? Yeah. You know, there's um nah, but I think most of the responses that I've seen, um, even from folks that I respect have been very disappointing. And yeah. I think in many cases, um, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a very small sector of folks that are really like, you know, outright anti-imperialist and have like principal politics, unfortunately. And I think that, um, you know, sort of across the board, you see people, I've seen people on the left talk about Ukraine's right to like national liberation. I've seen people invoke that sort of anti-colonial language when it comes to Russia. I've seen folks um you know talk about how cuba is state capitalist now and so the people are revolting against that uh, i've seen people talk about how cuba is also not you know i mean how china's not um you know they're not really socialist so that that means that the people are you know oppressed and all that sort of shit. i've, I've seen the stuff with iran and i've seen folks even try to take a left uh well what is functionally an ultra left position on iran by trying to you know out left the left or whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking a basic, not taking a basic, you know, principal position from an international perspective, um, yeah. you know, in solidarity with what the coup attempt. And I think one of the things that you know really pissing me off about a lot of folks is that they will invoke the memories of people who were overthrown by coups, um, you know, the New Jewel movement in Grenada, you know, uh, Allende in Chile, um, you know. Aristide, you know, they, uh, you know, they are in Krumah, they, you know, they'll invoke the memories of these people, but then not study how coups, you know, take place and how they're manufactured. They're manufactured largely through the funding of independent or quote unquote independent organizations, uh, you know, independent journalists and, you know, the, the, these sorts of things that are passed off, you know, anti anti authoritarian leftists, whatever, the, again, these sort of like things without definition, but they sound good uh and they take advantage of people's you know emotions and they take advantage of people's you know immediate responses to you know just you know conditions and i, I don't know like I, i've even seen you know fo like one of the things that really bothers me especially like on the point of like being against authoritarianism in other countries or and support of political prisoners in other countries is that these folks do not they don't go hard for these types of things here in the United States. You know, if they were really going hard for political prisoners, then where are all these organizations dedicated to political prisoners? You know, where are, you know, the organ the mass organizations that at least have it as a component of their work? And even folks who, so there's a double, you know, problem with that, because some folks who even, you know, like a lot of the folks that, um, occupy a lot of spaces having to do with political prisons, a lot of them are like anarchists, unfortunately, and they do tend to also take ultra left positions, um, you know, on international politics. But that's, you know, that's kind of the state that, you know, shit is in here in the United States. You know, we have the ultra left, now we have the left, <laughs> um, <laughs> which, you know, pretends to be, you know, radical, but then, you know, functionally outside of you know the, these sort of positions functionally outside of like the united states their positions are not radical in any real type of way 
you know, they are not anti-imperialist positions. And, you know, is there are some things like the least that they can do is, you know, try to at least study the politics of the political prisoners that they represent or that they claim to represent or the legacies of the people that they claim to invoke. Uh, you know, study those histories. Um, and that's that's really not there. And it leads to a lot of unprincipled positions and a lot of like scattered shit, you know, <laughs> going on in, in the United States. And, um, you know, this is really unfortunate. Yeah, no, most of what do you think about that, Erica? Yeah, I was going to say this. Um, I know I know I noted it in the piece, but it's like already held biases. Like I mentioned, like my introduction to Ron is like being a viewer of Shaw's and Sunset. So you can imagine if everyone's thinking, well, shit, well, maybe that is what Iran's like. Maybe it is a dictatorship because it's propagandized in that way. Um, so we're meant to see that. And I, that's why I, I made the point to say, like, they've been under sanctions for, like, at least 40 years. Um, there has been so much anti-Iran propaganda um, that's that's older than I am. So uh, most of us have grew up on that specific understanding of this country, which is probably why the images of the revolution, like, before the revolution is so appealing because we've only ever seen one sort of image of Iran, which is like, you know, super authoritarian. Um, it seems like nobody has any kind of rights. Nobody can say anything anywhere. And I think one of the things that I learned from not just your interview, but then Rania on uh, Breakthrough News had a great interview um, that I think when people talk about these places, they don't talk about countries having like different areas and different towns and different, they make it like they collapse everything into one. So even if that Hajib law existed in one area, it didn't exist. It wasn't a widespread thing. And I think even understanding just that is a different understanding from what we're told or what we're made to understand about Iran, because it's just like, oh, it's it's functioning this whole way. It's like, no, they have democratic processes and people vote and, you know, and and people voted for that in that town. They didn't vote for it in the next one. Like, like just understanding that, I think, um, brings some clarity to what we're being actually told and what's actually being seen. And like I said, there's tens of thousands of people in the street for anti-U.S. Um, intervention and anti-U.S. Um, meddling um, in Iran in the capital city. And that's not at all what we're seeing on mainstream media. We're seeing them attack the mosque. We're seeing the, cut, the cutting of the hair. The other thing for that with me is um, – most likely than not, or what I've been seeing, I haven't seen any Iranian person do that. I've been seeing strictly Americans or celebrities or uh, pseudo influencers. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know if I want to be shady or not <laughs> today. <but laughs> I'm thinking about it. Like, whatever you, whatever you want to say, we uh, we no, have no uh, uh, NGO overlords. Uh, I don't know if folks are familiar with Smarter in Seconds. That little. Um, so Blair Mani recently just shaved all her head off, uh, all her hair off. So uh, in solidarity, and it's just like, you know, um, these people have reached. These people are influencers in a sense, and there's no investigation of anything. So they kind of carry that. They carry it. They carry the water for for a state for empire, and so that's primarily why I wrote the hashtag uh, piece because. When you see how it spread, especially bring back our girls, I mean, it, people were just sharing it indiscriminately. Um, it was all over. It was a big thing. And then by the time it got to Michelle Obama, then it became a massive thing. But I mean, from Russell Simmons to Chris Brown, I mean, every sort of celebrity that you can think of was sharing, bring back our girls, but nobody was really asking any questions. And then when I say that it, it, it resulted in the expansion of Africa, we know that one of the claims is that it fight, it's fighting terrorism on the continent and Boko Haram is a terrorist organization. So it makes sense that the U.S. sends people out there and intervene. So I don't know. It's just for me, it's just like it just it just snowballs into something bigger and bigger. And I, I when Cuba happened, I was like, wow, this is wild. And then Ukraine happened. I was like, wow, this is crazy. And now this, you're like, when the fuck does it really stop? Like, because it's more out of control. And we're not really, I mean, we can make all the criticisms we want, but we're earnestly not organized in a way to combat that shit at the levels that it's reaching. 
And that's what's frightening for me because it's like, hold on. Does anybody really understand what we're engaging in? Like, even if you earnestly believe these things, I think the failure to allow people to handle their own processes, like like you mentioned, Iran, this is a, a revolutionary government. Cuba is a revolutionary. Like, these people have had their revolutions, meaning that these people have already gone through the processes of having to struggle and deal with governments they don't fucking like. So maybe, like, <laughs> like allow uh, for that to happen. And, you know, your position would be, hey, end the sanction, you know, because that that doesn't help if they're trying to really fight against their government because sanctions doesn't help them get food, sanctions, you know, their everyday life. It, it, it creates barriers to where you can't struggle, just like how we understand being colonized here and the, the sanctions that we have here domestically prevents us from struggling back against our government. 